Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Methuen, Massachusetts. Today our liturgy is from the Book of Common Prayer, uh, which may be found on page 355 or on the uh, sheets that were sent you this week from the church. Whoever you are, wherever you are in your journey of faith, grace and peace to you in Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I make 
weal and create woe. I am the Lord, I am the Lord do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 9. We will read responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord, Lord all, all the whole earth. earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim, Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly. Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with the full conviction just as you know what kind of person we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God. from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that has come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God.
Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and uh, whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Is he in favor of paying the tax 
in order to keep the status quo with Rome to protect the comfortable lifestyle of the elite. What Jesus says in the version I grew up with, and maybe some of you did in the King James, he said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God. It is clear throughout his ministry, Jesus is not in favor of fomenting a violent overthrow of the Roman governor and his legions. Violence, Jesus would say, is not God's way. And Jesus knows that it will lead to the enforcement of the strength of Rome and numerous thousands of crucifixions and the utter destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, which actually would happen about 40 years after Jesus' encounter here in the temple. But then what does it mean to render unto God that which is God's? Well, we all know because of Genesis, human beings carry God's image. We're made in God's image. I would say all creation is stamped with the living image of God. Therefore, Jesus is calling us to give ourselves to God. Ourselves. You know, we talk about time, talent, and treasures. There's a shorthand word for that. Give ourselves to God. To God's worship and God's service. To pledge our allegiance to our Creator and Redeemer and Sustainer. To once again align ourselves with God's will, God's love, with the grain of the universe. That's Jesus' call for us, made in God's image. Now this may sound all boringly obvious. Okay, yeah, we learned all this in Sunday school. But I suggest it may take on a deeper meaning when we look at what happens through history of those folks who claim to be followers of Jesus, yet pledge their allegiance not to the God and Father of Jesus, but to some other image, some other blended image of God. One example which is ready in front of us, Nazi Germany, the worship of God, leader, and nation are all melded together. The, the German Christians, they all went to church, but they worshipped all this melded together. As one historian puts it, quote, church leaders and theologians channel Nazi propaganda into visual symbols, placing a swastika on the altar or a banner, swastika banner hanging from the church ceiling. Unlike the Soviet Union that tried to get rid of God the Nazis were much smarter. They just simply co-opted God for their murderous nationalist agenda. And the German people, the German Christians, the large majority of them go along with it because Hitler had been raising their standard of living, their self-image in the world, their own confidence in themselves, and of course turning against the Jews that, well, that they were a convenient scapegoat for their problems. From Jesus' baptism to his last breath on the cross, his central message is the inbreaking of the realm of God. Jesus reveals God as healer, forgiver, and builder of a nonviolent, all inclusive community of compassion and justice. And Jesus calls us here today to give our lives to God and God's community, God's realm. This means, though we may be tempted, this means, you know, just running to the hills or to another country where they don't have unrest and the coronavirus like we do, and letting our, our country just burn up, literally and figuratively, to just run away is not an option for those who follow Christ. You know that, of course. 
And Jesus calls us onto a much harder path. It's called the way of the cross. The way of selfless service in Christ to build communities of hope. I was listening last fall, seems like a long time ago now, last fall to an interview with Brian McLaren, many of you may know him, he was a, a leader in transforming faith and in the emerging church. And he said there are three kinds of hope people are holding. The first he called cheap hope. Cheap hope. These are the folks who think everything's going to be okay. Just relax. Things will automatically return to how they've always been. Therefore, the good news is there's nothing we need to do. So just relax. Sit back. Be passive. Everything's going to be okay. They think the pandemic and climate crisis and racial injustice and our political unrest will automatically calm down like a hyperactive child at the end of the day, you know, just finally runs out of energy and falls asleep. Cheap hope. Then on the other side of the spectrum is what he calls dead hope. Dead hope. These folks believe everything is just completely hopeless. Everything is going to get much worse. Our country will devolve from a republic where leaders honor their commitment to the Constitution and into a place where the chief concern is no longer the common good, but just people getting reelected and the rich getting richer. It's too late to fix any of this. There's no need to try, certainly no need to vote. Dead hope. Notice that dead hope and cheap hope, while having very different versions of the future, both say there's nothing we can do. And God, if there is one, He's on the other side of the universe playing computer games or something. But then Brian McLaren says there's a third alternative that he sees, and he calls it deep hope. Deep hope. Deep hope sees and acknowledges the severity of our medical and political and cosmic situation. And deep hope doesn't know, doesn't assume, well, everything's just going to be fine. But those with deep hope live the wisest and right way because God is with us, is working in our midst, is working through us and our struggles. Even if now it's hard to see the results, these folks are doing the right thing because it is the right thing. And in line with what they see Christ doing in their midst, in deep hope, the future is open and we get to participate with God in its formation. Think about it. Nothing could have been more hopeless than that Friday afternoon when Rome crucifies Jesus. The disciples should have just crawled away back under some rock, never to be heard from again, for their hope was dead. But then Sunday comes, and very ordinary women and men are transformed by the light of the glory of God in the face of the risen Christ. And because of the presence of the Spirit, their faith, their hope, their love, go throughout the Roman Empire, transforming it from the inside out so that just 20, 25 years after the resurrection, there's this small church in Thessalonica up in northern Greece, and Paul would write to them, and we heard what he wrote to them, part of it this morning, he would write to them, quote, 
you became imitators of us and of the Lord Jesus. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that, he says, you became an example to all the believers. My sisters and brothers, now is our time to receive the word with joy and inspired by the Holy Spirit to become an, an example of all the believers of the deep hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for you, for your holy Catholic church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the South Deanery, the parish of St. John the Evangelist in Hingham, St. John's Church Holbrook, Trinity Church Marshfield, the Church of Our Savior Milford, Milton, and the Order of St. Luke. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, and we pray for our friends at St. John's in Humbi, Tanzania. In the local cycle of prayer, we pray for the Fellowship Bible Church here in Methuen. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers to your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, the Bishop Alan Gates, Ann Duffy, Chris and Doreen Hutchins, Tony Montecalvo, Howard Dearden, Jack and Family, Sean Brodeur, Dot Johnson, Kelly Tinch Hansen, Ralph Carey, Gertrude Carey, Ellen Weinhold, Kimberly Barker, Blanche Campbell, Christopher Brennan and Janet Ceballos Brennan, Eddie Monday, a 10-year-old boy from Humbi, a 
uh, waiting for a liver transplant. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. The altar today is prepared in loving memory, memory of John H. Betty and Robert Fugel by the Fugel family. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold the realm of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace, Christ. God's peace. Peace, Christ. Again, good morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, as you saw in your mailing, we're still accepting checks here, uh, labeled for the food pantry so they can get um, uh, food cards for the needy. There will be a vestry Zoom meeting today at 1230. And please uh, read your stewardship letter, uh, which Jim Began has uh, composed and, and was sent out with our mailing today. And now we're going to have our stewardship witness uh, by Joanne Markovich, and uh, Hal is going to play her recording. Good morning. I've been asked to read this morning a letter that was written by the Reverend Diane Jardine Bruce. And she's the Bishop Suffragan in the Diocese of Los Angeles. Her ministry focuses heavily on stewardship, financial sustainability, and new community development. Once again, in today's Gospel, the Pharisees are trying to trip up Jesus. If Jesus supports the paying of the tax, his Jewish siblings, who are rebelling against the Roman occupation, will shun him. If Jesus says it's unlawful to pay the tax, he'll be in trouble with the Roman authorities. What does Jesus do? He asks them to look at the coin. It's a Roman coin. Pay the tax, meaning give the emperor back his own coin. Then Jesus adds that wonderful line, give to God the things that are God's. What exactly is God? Well, we are. Our Christian faith in God points us always to live a life of gratitude and generosity. God showed us how we are to live and how to give to God the things that are God. God gave us God's Son, God's first fruit, and we are asked to do the same. 
Remembering that everything we have, everything we do, everything we are is a gift from God. And it is a gift that is meant to be shared. When we share from our first fruits as God shared God's first fruit with us, we are modeling the same generosity God has shown us. Remember, we have two sets of three-legged stools in our Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement Scripture, Reason and Tradition and Time, Talent and Treasure. The first shapes our faith. The second is how we use the gifts we have been given to live out our faith. Reverend Bruce gave us some questions here for reflection. The first is, how does practicing your faith help you recognize all the gifts God has given you? The second is, how are you giving to God the things that are God through your time, talent, and your treasure? I've tried to answer those questions and have a brief reflection of my own, so please bear with me. Practicing my faith is being grateful to God for all of the things that I have, not just the good things, not just material things. Sometimes it's hard to be grateful for things like a flat tire, until I think about the flat tire not happening in the middle of 93. It was closer to home and I could wait for someone from AAA to come fix it while I had a second cup of coffee at home. I was late for work and missed a meeting, but needed to put it in perspective. God gave me the ability to have a car, a job, and the ability to get the tire fixed. I was able to slow down and appreciate things I might have missed on the walk home. The wildlife I passed, the birds, even the traffic. When I think about time, talent, and treasure, it's hard to not think about our current circumstances with the pandemic. We may have more time on our hands to reach out and call someone who might be feeling lonely or distanced. I enjoy reading cards and often pick a few up at the grocery or dollar store to cheer someone up. I can do that because I'm not big on phone conversations. No talent for that from this one. Treasure can be whatever is meaningful to you personally. One treasure for me is the relationship I have with all of you, my church family. Treasure is keeping up with my pledge so we can keep the heat and lights on here, just like at home. Time, talent, and treasure can be volunteering to rake leaves or clean up the acorns in the driveway or volunteering at an activity when we get back. I have many things to be grateful for and need to tell God thank you more, more often than I do. We all need to ask ourselves, ourselves, what time, talent, or treasure do I have that I can share with those around me? Thank you for listening to this. I hope you have a blessed day. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice.
great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. against us, and lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food of Christ's loving presence. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, the way of the cross. And may God's blessing, the eternal majesty, the incarnate word, and the ever-abiding spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.